Okay, today we're going to use watercolour, China Graph pencil, and we're going to use pastels. We're not using the pastels with the water like we did before, we can do. Um, we're going to use a China Graph pencil first. Now, China Graph pencils, lovely things. Um, you can see here that they peel off just by pulling that cord down, and then you can peel the paper back like that, and it just unspirals. So if you're out in the field, it's very, very useful because you haven't got a great pencil sharpener with you. Do you like that? Yeah? They are a bit soft, so if you're pushing fairly hard, keep it vertical, or you'll find that you snap them off. There's a whole box of them there. But once they're on, you've had it, you can't get them off. So it's better to draw with a pencil lightly first, and then go on with them. What we're going to use them for, and you see, normally I don't use black, do I? Um, normally I'm just straight on with um, colours. I mix my blacks with deep blues and deep browns. But we're going to use black today because the watercolour actually tint it slightly. And I do want this strength of dark against the snow that we're doing. Snow scene with pheasants in. So I'm going to just tell you about drawing birds as well. Simple ways of doing animals and birds, which we should do as we go along. So I've already led you through some of the things. You know, I'm quite devious in a way because when I'm giving you subjects, sometimes I'm bringing other things into it. Um, the pencil is slightly waterproof, so it won't come off with the water. Um, but it will allow the paint just to take to it. Uh, you can get different coloured China Graph pencils as well if you, if you ever want to use them, but they're very really good for this sort of work, this particular sort of work. Now I've drawn these birds out. What I'm going to do first, before I even go on to this, I'm going to put all the dark lines in, all of these dark areas, in the pencil completely. Very, very loosely. Then I'm going to paint the watercolour on, very strongly, forgetting the whites altogether, because I'm going to put those back in with pastel. So it's a very you know, rapid and easy way of working. But the watercolour being transparent will let these dark pencils show through. Okay? To draw birds, birds come from, you can I'll sort of try and do it sideways, through your sheet upside down, but the other three, being, <laughs> all right, to draw birds, um, they come from an egg. So your, your easiest way is just to draw an egg. So if we draw an egg like that, an egg shape, yep. Yeah. And then I do another one at the angle of the head here, right at the top and bottom, join it up. Put a beak on it, put a wing on it, put a tail on it, and you've got an innocent pheasant. So eggs, simple as that. Don't worry about that. That's me cutting on you, this. Yeah, that was me. So with, with, the, with the pheasants, you can see what I've done here. There's my egg shape, look. And the egg there, and voila, you have a, a nice, easy... Although, in this case, this pheasant is actually in reverse. The narrow end is that end. It's slightly narrower this end and wider that end, look. So just bear that in mind, but very simple way of doing birds. Now, if I was going to do a bird flying, then all we've got to do is the egg shape again. I'll put another egg here, that's slightly more outstretched this time. So I'll bring the neck out. And now the wings on a bird, there are, are two main, there were three bones in it, but two, two, two ones that we're concerned about. There's one comes um, forward and one comes back like that. And the skin stretches between here and there. Those are the two bones there. There's another one actually that comes forward there. You just have to determine to see these things, but don't worry about that one. And the feathers come out from the back of the skin like this. Now all of this is covered in layers of smaller feathers, and then these come out one over the other, overlapping. So we get this sort of shape. If I now bring that one upwards, so if I come up and back, that's that shape. Bring that round, and I simply do that, we have a bird flying. And it's the same the other way up. The only difference in that is for shortened form. If the, if the wing comes out towards us and you start to get this sort of effect where it curls over and the wing goes behind here and comes over there like that. And that's for shortened form. That, that's, that's shaded. It's like the hand. If I put my hand up to you, it's far larger than my head because it's in front. If I bring it behind, it goes smaller. So if I was going to do a figure, for instance, um, hurtling down, and I put a head there, and I put hands here, very, very rough hands, but if they come out like that, they're far larger as they come towards us, they're in four shortened form, his legs are going up behind him, and you've got a figure there coming out towards you. Yeah, four shortened form, very, very rough. But just to give you an idea, we're going to go into all that later, perspective later. <laughs> <laughs> just, just introductions again, I'm always introducing new things. It's a speciality of many. <laughs> so, what I've done is taken the pencil, I've marked the paper, just so I know where things are going approximately, I'm not too worried, and I've got the things in approximate scale with a the pencil. Then what I'm going to do is take this pencil, get this bit out of the way, and I know where my main points are. If it's a broken line, you make it a broken line. So this line that comes down here isn't completely, you see how they're all broken those, because the snow's coming in between, aren't they? 
I'm not even bothering to worry where it's broken or where it's not broken at the moment. It's going to bring them all up. And as dark as this, I'm pushing very hard, quite sharp, but don't push on the side of it because you'll break it off. And I'm going to make all of these, yeah? As soon as I've done all of those, I'm going to go back to my pheasants and I'm going to paint the pheasants separately. They want a bit more care, but the rest will be all very, very loose. So what you guys are going to do first is draw this out just as I've done, and then take the channel of our pencils and do it just as I'm doing, just follow me. Okay? So I'm not going to run the camera all the time because it would take ages for the people to watch us doing it. I'm just, I've done these few darks and so on. Down here, look, these little bits of stumps that are sticking up. I'll do those darks in there. They're not completely dark, but wherever something is very black, I'm going to put the blacks. I'm just putting the darks only where they are. Just a lump of stuff here, dark in there. But very, very dark. And in. Use it. It's almost like wax crayon when you use it. It's quite, it's quite nice stuff. So I'm going to put all those darks, not on the birds, not bother to put the darks on the birds, I'll do that with paint. But all of the trees in the background, okay? So you guys go ahead and draw out now. And I suppose it's the same thing, isn't it, in front? You know, you suddenly realise actually a lot of words are similar. Yeah, but some of them are quite different. I mean, C, um, <laughs> if in French, and C, yes in Spanish, and you <laughs> could get thrown out. <laughs> I'm now ready to go on and paint my boids. A bit of black just into the foreground, just to leave the eye in. One or two around here. <laughs> right, put that pencil over there for Leslie, and I'm going to go down to painting my birds. Right, what I'd like to do is just have you watch my painting one of the birds, okay? Now, with watercolour, we're leaving light behind. More like a turkey. No, it's not too bad. Don't make them too strong yet, because say, if, 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 if you need to rub something out, keep your pencil marks light, so, okay? Yeah. So if you're not quite sure of the bird, keep it light at first. And then okay. Remember that it comes up from, from that one I was saying to you earlier on, is thick to thin, yeah? yeah. So the egg is the other way around. Right. That one, yes, you're okay on, but that one you should have it in reverse. Okay, I'll do it again. Well, that's why I keep the pencil marks light. Yeah. Now, we're going to leave the white bits behind, although I could put them back in with pastel, and I'm going to later, but on the bird, I'm going to leave it behind. Uh, you, can, you can draw the shapes out if you want to. Um, so all the light colours first. So if I want to, for instance, um, I like to use my paper as a, as a palette, all this golden colour here on the tail, I'm going to put that straight in with a light coat of, of just, I'm painting wet next to wet here. Um, wet on dry, wet next to wet. The gold all the way up its back here. Then there's a, a ring around its neck that I'll leave white, quick as that. While I've got paint on my brush, I'm going to do both sides. So I'm not... The viewers won't see this, but I'm, I'm now actually doing the other one, the other side. Quite a strong yellow. Then I'm using that aureolin yellow again. I'm going to bring that orange yellow round into here. Bits of white coming down on the side there. Drop that bright red onto the head. It's a bit of lovely bright colour for that. I want to go orange down here, so I'm going to take some cadmium orange and drop that in, little strokes, wet into wet, to get the fluffy furry effect. But I'm working very rapidly as usual today, it's just for fun really, isn't it? Colour that wet into wet, so very quick today. Bring that down through here, leaving those light areas. Now I can go darker. Now if I put wet in there, it's going to spread. So I can use that effect, it's dry on this light bit here. So I'm going to use my lightest blues now, I'm going to come across to my Cerulean blue. Get some going. And just paint that in and around the head here. Don't mind if that red just comes in slightly. Right up and around the back of the head there, leaving that white band. And it's a bit around here. A very light cerulean blue. Coming down the feathers here. A bit stronger. in feather shapes and it spreads out in a nice feather-like way. This is where the control of the watercolour comes in. Get little strokes of it coming up. You see how far they're spreading? Little touches. If I bet to make it too hard they'll go too far. Bring that right round. This is probably the hardest thing you've ever done. And I'm going to go a little bit fluffy on the edge. So I'm timing this as I go. I'm watching it as I go along. Now I want to go darker still. 
I'm going to come into my warmer blues. I'm going to start taking some of the cobalt blue now, a little bit of octamine and cobalt blue, much, much stronger blue, beautiful blue. And let's look at just dropping some of that into the pheasants here. See there's bits of light showing. You see how they work together, the warm and the cool blue. Then there. A lot to take in. Come around here. Start just painting down into the bird here. I want this warmth, I want this orange, it's very important because I want that against the um, cool of the snow, you see. Start painting the bars, bars across the tail there. It's all dark back, back here, into the wing. And the darker I go, the lighter the other colours around it will appear to be. So the darker I make these colours, the lighter these colours are going to start to appear. Come up just around the back of the head. Just a bit around the beak there. Right, there. You see the pheasant appearing now. Up here, those purples into there, and the edge here. Around the neck, around the beak, carefully there. Coming around here. Still a bit wet there, so I'm deliberately letting it spread in fluffily. So don't worry about this bit of it, this is just a bit of extra fun today. And if you really don't want to handle this, leave it and just do your snow. It doesn't matter. Have a go if you like. It's only a bit of paper. You see how we're using the wet wet effects to get the feathery texture. So at some stage I've got to stop. I've got to let that dry. I can't just keep painting. The whole thing just become too light. Too, 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 just, just one colour. The, the, the leg comes down there. And I'm going to go really dark in my deep blues. I can find it. Should be here somewhere. That's the one I want. Prussian blue. And let's see what happens when we start to make the bird quite dark. Down there. And you see these almost becomes a black, but I don't need black because I've got these sorts of darks. Almost do for what I want for that bird. Let's come back to this one to, to show the viewers again. So I'm bringing my Prussian blue in now. I'm a very, very deep blue into here, which almost goes to a black to finish off. Really bring these colours out and make them shine. Right, instant pheasants. We can do more detail later, but that just gives us the colours. So I'm going to let that dry off, and then I'm going to come in with a big wash brush and show you how strong we have to make these blues in the background, OK? So you've got a bit of catching up to do. Right, so there you go. <laughs> now, my birds have dried, and this means that I can do harder edges now. So I'm going to take some of that deep blue I was using earlier, and just do a bit more detail into the birds now because I can put sharper edges in. You see now, Leslie, how this sharp edge comes through so those marks now, they're quite hard and sharp, aren't they? What colour is that? Blue? This is that deep blue I was using with a little bit of purple. So what I'm doing now is just bringing out the details with the sharper marks. Right, that's that. Okay, thanks.
Right, my pheasants are now dry enough to, to work around. So I'm going to put my blues on now and I'm going to put all of these deep blues and pinks and purples in. Again I need to work for my lightest colours. So there are some creams in here. Are you ready ladies? Yes. Yellow is my lightest colour. I'm going to put, I'm not too worried about yellow because I'm going to be putting it back in with the creams later. I'm going to almost do wet into wet over the entire painting. A little bit of cream here. I don't need too much of it, just here and there. Shut up you. I need your opinions either. Um, dog making noises. Right. Now, light blues first. So I'm going to start with my beautiful turquoises here. And I'm going to work those. I'm going to lose all of the white. I'm not worried because we're this time we were able to use the um, the pastels over the top. I'm going to use my lightest blues first and then work into those. And it's just going to totally... You can see how the pencil shows through, look. Yeah? Mm -hmm. It's not going to change that pencil. I'm virtually going to paint the thing out with this colour and I'm going to start dropping more in. So this is my, my coolest blue, which by mean what by will... What's my coolest blue? What do I mean by cool? The light on. <laughs> yeah, as in ice and fire. So cooler appears to be more acidic, whereas a warmer blue is more like this one, isn't it? Which is more purpley. Yeah. Right. And you're going to make more pigment into it now. Start dropping more pigment in. I want you to go much darker than you expect. Watercolor, remember, will dry lighter later. So I want you to be quite strong. Now I'm getting wet into wet effects with the snow. Look at that spreading out look. Bring that right the way around the pheasant here. So now I've got these lovely cool blues and I'm going to start painting some of the branch shapes. Quite dark behind here. And so the bird is standing out now. Much darker than you normally would paint with watercolour because if we don't, the pastel is just not going to show. I'm going to make more textural marks. So now I'm going to go to my next blue, which is this cobalt, this one here. So I've gone that one, that one, now that one. Lovely warm blues coming up into here. Just letting it spread snow like into the wet, into wet, twisting my brush as I go. All the way around this bird here. And now you can see the difference, can't you, Will, between the cool and the warm blues, yeah? You see what I'm saying about them? This is a very warm blue, isn't it? It's not quite purple, but it's on the way. And, talking of purple, now I've got these warm blues in. I'm going to take a little bit of the purple into that. And I'm going to start dropping in some of the purples into it, the really darks. And what we have is a wetting to wet mess, if you like, um, which we're going to pull back suddenly with the pastels later. Now I'm just finding the surface a bit more. I'm going back to some of these darks and just picking up on the surface of the snow. Little dark areas here. Back some forwards. If I wanted harder edges, like here, I would let it dry and then I'd come back and paint in. If I was doing just watercolour, that's what I would do, but I'm not. So that's as far as I want you to get with the, the paint. No and then we're going to finish with past <laughs> No pressure, just... <laughs> So back to the edges, that's right, don't, don't leave halos around the painting, come right. See how dark it is on that painting of mine? Fill it up like that. You're going to, you're, don't be confused by the lights in the painting, paint all the darks in. You're going to put the lights in later. So get the paper much, much darker, that's it. Right to the edge, use the side of the brush, get in, that's right. So right, that's it, that's it, that's Now you see the wet and wet effect you're getting, lovely. Right down to the bottom there, watch where the shadows come. That's right, then drop it in where you've been already, it's more, more in there. Really push yourself, come on, get... Get brave. That's it. Go right across where it's... That's, that's the way, Leslie. Now, all round the top of the bird as well. Round the bird's head. Don't, don't paint your head out. 
Yeah, just put a dark line around the bird, that's it, make sure it links up. Yeah, that's the way. Now we're going to use the pastels to bring the light colours out. And I want to start again from my lighter colours up to my white. I'm not going to start with the white, I'm going to start with colours. For instance, let's take this pink. Look how that just shows out on there already. That's why I said make sure things are dark enough. So now I've got to just use them lightly because I want the colour underneath. Look, if I just use it sideways, scumble as we call it, over there, I can use them lightly like that just to scumble. So look how that brings it out. It's a lovely effect. Be as light as you like where you want. And you can use them, dots and dashes, to bring out these little bits of, of light like this where they're shining. And suddenly the whole thing will come to life. It'll be lovely. These are quite advanced techniques. And these are things that I've developed myself. I mean, this is not something you're going to find in textbooks. This way of working. These are, these are developments that I've made personally. So I'm getting the benefit of my experience directly here now. You can use your finger if you want to smudge it slightly. If you wanted to use water with a pastel, you could do, as we did the other week. You can always work on the bird too if you want to. I wanted a bit more blue in the bird there, Leslie. Mm -hmm. I wanted the white collar. Now I could put it in, couldn't I? Mm -hmm. I could just touch the bird up a little bit. I want a bit more blue there or here. So, you know, put your darks in now. Um, so I'm going to go lighter and lighter. Now you're seeing it under very strong light, and I'm going to hold it up in the distance in a minute and just show you from a distance. Light against dark, dark against light, so let's bring some of these branches through here. If I want to, I can even go to my very darkest. It's a very, very deep blue to black. It's very, very deep blue now. Right, I'm going to just put these away a moment. I can do a bit more on it later. All I want to do for the minute is just show you this from a distance out of the strong light. I'm going to get the hand of it. Yes, so, you know, once we get them back, and you can start to see that light shining on the, on the camera at the moment, but uh, you'll see it later. So, yeah, I'm going to work a bit more on it, but you see how the highlights bring out everything else. Mm. So, and when we get them back as well, it is an impressionist piece. Piece to work it up. I can take some different yellows, stronger yellows here and there, of the sunlight. I can let it cascade through here a bit more. I can go a bit stronger with my blues where I want to. I could even go into turquoises and things and I can start to add some of these sort of colours in. Let's have a few more of these stronger. See the, the, how that cool works there, look? So, pheasants in snow, there we go. Mm -hmm. Pheasants in snow, then we get made poetic today, aren't we? Pheasants in snow, yeah, there we go. Yeah. Now you do it. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to think about snow at the moment. <laughs> And I think, yes, we've got to say you've done very well again today. It hasn't been easy. The hardest part probably was drawing the birds. Um, but you've learnt the technique now, and it's another feather in your cap, isn't it? Right. So it has been enjoyable, hasn't it? Hard work in two hours. But the point is now, you'd like to try it again, but in your own time, on something a bit different. But you, yeah. you've seen the technique, that's the point. And, and Pippi, you need to finish a bit more, that's fine. But you've got the idea, and you've got the light in those beautifully. I mean, yeah. they're all... Uh, they've all captured the light, they've all got the light coming through from the middle, which is lovely. Um, and as I say, Pippa's there, a bit more work to do, but the light's coming through from the middle beautifully. So there we go.